We are proud to be partnering with the Chamber of Commerce and the heart of our city on this initiative. As you're well aware, 2018 was a challenging year not only for the business community, but also for the community as a whole. The BRZ, along with our members, brought our concerns, concerns to the attention of City Council and the Police Commission. Mayor Spearman, members of Council and City Administration listened to those concerns, as well as the concerns of the community, and are taking action. They are taking the ne necessary steps to address the diverse issues associated with the drug crisis. These sessions are just one of a number of initiatives that are underway to address the issues that have impacted our businesses and the community as a whole. We are optimistic for 2019 and beyond and are very appreciative of the strategic work that is being done by the City of Lethbridge, the heart of our City Committee, Community and Social Development, Lethbridge Police Services and many others to make our downtown and community a safer place to be. Just to echo a little bit of what Ted said, to give you guys a little bit of background, each one of the organizations involved today, um, the Downtown BRZ, the City, the Lethbridge Police Services, and the Lethbridge, Lethbridge Chamber of Commerce, all have this idea of seeing some of these initiatives come to place. And so it's really exciting to see us come together today, and we're going to continue to work together to ensure that these initiatives are being put in place, as well as gather um, feedback from our stakeholders, you guys, to make sure that we're on the right track and, and uh, tackling the issues at hand. So we're really, really excited to have this as one of many to come. Um, now we're gonna have a presentation by Brown Strain, our city manager. Where did you go, Brown? Um, and he's gonna go through the initiatives that are going to be put into place by the city. Thank you very much. So uh, thanks everybody, thanks for coming on a rather chilly day. And uh, for those who don't know, I'm from Winnipeg, came here six months ago, I did not bring the weather with me. Yeah, yeah I did not do that, that is a great joke though and I haven't heard it enough in the last week or two. Uh, so again, just wanna uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here. And a lot of what we're gonna talk about today is because of you. So because of the advocacy, uh, because of you sharing stories of what was needed, uh, what's happening in our evolving situation, uh, we took action. City Council took action. We did it through a number of things. We did some things internally, and then, of course, uh, Council has put funds towards some very specific initiatives, uh, which will help as, as we move forward here. Also important to remember, this is a dynamic situation. Um, and what I mean by that is it's changing. You know, where we are today is not where we were a year ago. Where we were a year ago is not where we were five years ago. Uh, substance abuse is real, it's evolving itself, opiates to, to meth, et cetera. Uh, and oddly enough, you know, people pine a little bit for the good old days when alcohol was, was our major concern. So you can imagine if that trend continues, what are we gonna be talking about today, you know, 20 years from now, what would today have been? So that's kind of a scary thought, but at the same time, collectively, there's a lot of things we could do, and that's what we're here to talk about today. So, uh, again, throughout the, the last little while, there's been uh, an increase in erratic behavior, there's been an increase in presence of drugs in our community. Um, that's causing some very different uh, issues for us that we need to change and adapt to moving forward and we need to do that as a collective. So clearly with downtown we want it to be a safe clean place where people come. All people. And that's an important thing to remember. Anyone who's ever heard me talk about the substance abuse part. Uh, at the bottom of the, that issue it's people and that's core. Um, you know, you can look at it as a nuisance, you can look at it as erratic behavior, but it's people that need help at the end of that. There are people that for various reasons have ended up where they are, uh, and there needs to be help and supports to get them back on the right track. Part of that is enforcement, part of that is education, part of that is prevention. Uh, there's various pillars, but we need to remember at the bottom of it all, it's people. Sons, daughters, mothers, fathers, cousins, brothers and sisters. So, uh, part of that, you'll, that's why you'll notice a very balanced uh, approach that we're taking. Of course, the city also is not responsible for every single issue. Um, I often refer to it, and the mayor is probably going to get sick of hearing this one, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, it's like changing a tire, right? You tell me to change the tire. And I say, well, I can't change a tire. I don't have enough tools. You don't give me the right tools. You gave me a pair of pliers. And you say, no problem. I'll give you a thousand more pairs of pliers. It doesn't help me. So I don't have the ability to do in-tox. I don't have the ability to do some of the detox programs. Those responsibilities rely elsewhere. That said, what the city does have is a leadership role. 
with organizations like the Chamber, the VRZ, et cetera, we have a leadership role and we can hold those accountable to those jurisdictions. Um, well, we can just hold them accountable, so that's where we are. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about a few of those things that are going on. So on the focus of downtown, so we have, Andrew, I'm going ahead of you, aren't I? On off script. So we've uh, we expanded the area, the focus of, of downtown. So the traditional downtown is, is of course there, but the issue is not just there, nor are the programs specifically just for downtown. Right, so we'll talk about that a little bit too, but it's wherever there's an issue, these the programs are designed to, to expand and move beyond that. So I uh, won't spend too much time on the next one. Obviously, you're here for the item and start, the education part. But there were 12 different initiatives that are moving forward. So that may seem like a lot, but you'll see that some of them are actually bridging initiatives until some of the major ones kick in. So it's kind of like uh, changing the tires while you drive. Okay. So I'm going to slip right to, to get into the, uh, the hard one. So for this part, I'm just going to do a brief overview and then ask Chief Davis to come up and talk uh, a little bit more about what the police are doing. So I'm not actually going to talk about the policing in downtown. You know, let, uh, let Rob do all of that. But on the, the watch program, so this is very important and a key component moving forward. So what the watch program is, for those who don't know, and again, I'll, I'll let Rob get into great detail, but it's a hybrid of enforcement, visibility, and social, social work. So it's about being there, it's about being visible, it's about helping people, uh, and it's about getting them to the resources that they need. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Rob to talk, quickly talk about exactly what the watch program is going to do, which city council has funded for the next two years in excess of half a million dollars. As far as the enforcement piece, we have Sergeant Robin Clausen, and I know she's in the room here somewhere. Uh, I'll leave that to her. That's her unit. She oversees the eight members that are in that unit. We doubled the strength of that unit in the fall of 2018, recognizing we have to be dynamic as a police service and respond to the concerns of citizens. Uh, so that piece we'll leave uh, to Sergeant Clausen. With respect to the watch, uh, very, very grateful to many of you in this room that were supportive. So throughout the tail end of 2017, throughout 2018, I was going around to different groups uh, in the city promoting the idea of a watch uh, in the city. It's based on a program that's op operated successfully in Winnipeg and a version of it in Vancouver. Uh, and, and I've been fortunate that I got to see firsthand how it operated in Winnipeg and then when I found out our city manager was coming for Winni from Winnipeg, uh, that was an added bonus. And ironically, uh, this is an example of how we tend to operate in silos and isolation in organizations because I was looking at the watch for the police service and we were at a, we were making a bid for the Can-Am 2022 Police Fire Games and I was having a conversation with Ted Stilson and unbeknownst to me, Ted was looking at the watch. So here's the two of us expending our energy, not realizing we're working towards the same goal. So once that synergy happened, uh, the rest was history. We were on board to, again, to speak to any of the groups in this room today and see if we could get buy-in. Congruent to that, in 2017, end of January, early February 2017, I was allowed to come back before council uh, on the 2015 to 18 budget ask. And the last instruction given to the commission chair, which is my boss, from our mayor was, Chief, make sure when you come back in 2019 that it's not more of the same, that you were com you'll be coming with efficient and innovative solutions. And that's something I took to heart. It's something all police chiefs take to heart. Uh, and many of you were very vocal over the last three or four years uh, that throwing more cops at it, we don't see a difference in the community. And so heeding those directions and heeding your concerns, the watch uh, coupled with our community peace officer program made sense. So the community peace officer program, I'm not gonna speak on that today. Here I'm gonna speak on the watch. Those are gonna be fully trained officers with limited duties. And as we speak right now, they're sitting in a classroom being trained. And they will roll out initially in the downtown to deal with a lot of the issues that you're seeing that really don't require a full-fledged police officer. The watch is an opportunity for us to engage community volunteers with some uh, basically guaranteed spots in the prime time months. So there's that visibility, visibility out there. And as Bram said, it's not just enforcement. It really gets into the social piece and uh, beyond that, one that I'm very proud of is, is an opportunity for us to really engage a diverse community in the city of Lethbridge to test drive careers. Whether it be policing, addictions counseling, social services, EMTs, you name it, there's going to be exposure through that visibility and walking around the community for, uh, that the watch members are going to see 
that may interest them in a career or may steer them from, they may be heading towards one discipline and decide, you know what, policing's not for me, but I can see a future in social work. And if we can draw those people into the organizations, into the city, and reflect the diversity, that's an added bonus. Uh, and we're sitting very fortunate in Lethbridge because we have an incredible volunteer base. When you talk to the folks at Volunteer Lethbridge, we are some of the highest volunteer rates in Canada. And so here's an opportunity to take the instructions I was given, the concerns you had about no more of just the same, uh, having the opportunity to, to uh, work with Ted to, to work congruently on a goal, to have a city manager that saw it work firsthand in, in Winnipeg, and then to have the support of council to actually fund these initiatives is huge. I'm just gonna bring somebody up just to point out who he is for question and answer time. Uh, we're moving along with this. The CPOs, they're in training with the watch. Uh, we've identified Sergeant Mike Williamson to help us uh, get the WASH program off the ground. And at this time, there's a lot of background that has to happen. We have to write policies, procedures. We have to get authorizations from the province. And so uh, Mike is in charge of that at this time. It's a two-year pilot. We have to go back and show that we're showing success in the end of two years. And so Mike's the person that's been given the duty of getting this off the ground and supervising the WASH program. We have to leave here in 15 minutes because we're doing the interviews for the civilian manager. Uh, so it'll be very similar to our victim services unit where you have to have a civilian manager there because there are a lot of things that we have to do. We struggled early on where there were some myths out there that we're going to slap red shirts on them and put them on the streets. Training is such a critical component of this uh, for your safety. For anyone to believe that we would put people out without having the training to minimize and mitigate risk and liability is foolish. In this day and age, all police agencies, community agencies, corporation agencies, we understand that we cannot put people out there without the proper training. So the civilian manager will be there to help us facilitate, coordinate training for our volunteers as well. And those interviews are starting in an hour and 15 minutes. So we're trucking along with this and we'll be, we posted already for the first uh, summer, su summer students, we're calling them team leads. Uh, that will be the dedicated hours throughout the summer months, so there's that guaranteed visibility out on the streets in the times when we typically get the most complaints of perceptions of public safety in the downtown. And that posting went out Friday? Yesterday. Yesterday. So uh, just uh, share that with you to demonstrate that we're taking this serious. Uh, we were given a timeline to make sure we're producing results and to report quarterly, and we're very excited about this initiative because they will be working with you and with us to be eyes and ears out on the street and to increase the perceptions of public safety. And if it rolls out correctly, we know it will be successful. It's been successful in Winnipeg, it's been successful in Vancouver. We capitalize on the strengths we have as a city, like the volunteer base. We capitalize on the two post, three post-secondary institutions with Lethbridge College, Red Crow College, and the University. And we also engage, uh, we've had a number of retirees that want to just give back to the city they've called home. So the stars have aligned for us to have this program be successful. And should you have any question and answers uh, on, on the actual, I'll call it into the weeds, Sergeant Williamson is your person. So thank you. Thanks, Rob. Uh, so of course, those who are, are wondering, so you're gonna hear a lot of stuff now about some different initiatives we've put or we've expanded. This uh, last one, that the, the watch is obviously the new one. For those people who are watching the fiscal purse, of which I am one, you'll see that the watch will actually replace some of these programs moving forward. So it's not just all ad, it's about efficiency too. So if you wanna look at it from the fiscal side, there is that part going on. And of course the watch is going to be the people that are walking your street script, the ones coming into your business. And not just downtown. That's the other part. These folks can be deployed wherever there's an issue or a challenge or an event. So whoop up days, uh, something in Nicholas Sharon Park, et cetera. So wherever there happens to be an issue, there's that flexibility. So I'm gonna move to, uh, to security uh, next. So as mentioned, this program is, is up and running. The folks are, are coming online. They should be here in, in the summertime. But what do we do in the meantime? And that's something I heard loud and clear from a group of business owners um, a couple months ago. Very clear, we need to do something right now. So there's a few new programs uh, are coming in for the, for the short term, um, and they'll be reviewed to see the success of the watch. So number one is the hotspot security program. So this is putting a few, some extra dollars towards, um, well, basically what it says, right? Security in areas where there is immediate need between now and when the watch comes on. And there is actually an overlap. And then we'll review afterwards to see if that needs to continue. 
uh, public facility security. Anyone who followed the budget process for the full six days? <laughs> okay, well, I did, because I was there. Uh, one thing that we noticed with the budget security is we were asking for a lot of the same things over and over again. The library was asking for something. Uh, BRZ needed something. Uh, we need something at, uh, at our facilities. CASA needed something. There was all of these things that were going on. So what we noticed was there was an overlap. So you get to see that we're actually going to, to do some more things in the short term with the idea that we'll review that at that two year period to see if the watch is actually doing what we think it's going to do, in which case we may be able to, to loosen some of those things off. Um, on outreach, so the Diversion Outreach Team, which has been very successful, um, for those who don't know what the Diversion Outreach Team does, basically it has personal interactions, relationships with folks who are in need of help and they get them to the, the proper place. Okay. So we're looking at expanding that program. So that's what's on the board now and that's been funded. Uh, I believe that one was, a lot of these things um, you would have heard at City Council, um, they agreed to fund them and they told me to go find the money. So that work has taken place. All these projects, we have found some money. Um, we're taking away from different areas, we found some efficiencies, et cetera. Uh, I actually am due to report back on that on March 31st where I found that money, so I will do that. Uh, so I don't want to give away any of my secrets just quite yet. Um, but uh, again, this is expansion of that program. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the SAGE uh, group who are right here. These folks need to be commended. These are volunteers from the Indigenous community who are going out and helping folks. They're not getting paid, they're volunteers. They're the human face. So that said, they do need some resources. So there has been some money put aside uh, in, in support of Sage Clan to get some resources that they need to do the work that they're doing so that they are also safe. Uh, moving on to, to cleanliness, so one of the big issues we heard very clearly from the public and from business owners was it's important to have a clean downtown and, and a clean city. Okay, we all know that. Whether it be simple uh, debris, garbage, etc., or in this particular case, in the last couple of years, there's been a real issue with needles. Okay? Um, a few months ago, I'm going to say six to eight months ago, we were mainly focused on the substance abuse problem. We were mainly focused on picking up the needles not about anything else, that's what we were focusing on. So you'll see now it's a much broader strategy. Uh, the mayor has personally spearheaded um, projects with the, the provincial government, which they have funded. So fingers crossed, not sure when the election's gonna be called, but a lot of money's been announced for, for the city for intox and supportive housing. Supportive housing is obviously key for us. That gets some of the most vulnerable uh, folks off the street in a supported environment where they can be successful. And of course, intox, for anyone who doesn't know what intox is, it's a place, a safe place for people to go when they are intoxicated so that they can come down off of that. Okay, so that's what intox is. Intox is not detox. Detox is different. Detox is when you're getting off of the drugs permanently. Okay, so two different things. In a really crude way to look at it, intox is what we would have called in the past the drunk tank. Okay, so it's a place where people can medically come, come down with some supports. Okay, so those two programs, Supportive Housing and Intox, have both been announced. The Supportive Housing one is, is out. There's been an RFP. We're waiting to hear back from the province. Uh, same thing on Intox. They are exploring things as we speak, but of course, as, as we all know, there's an election pending. If that election is called, those things will unfortunately grind to a halt, uh, and then it'll be up to the next government to decide what to do next. So, but again, that's advocacy. That's the leadership role that uh, the mayor and city council are playing. That's the role that you are all playing. That's the role that we're coordinating, is to get those responsible to do their jobs. So we have the, the needle uh, collection debris. Everything we're looking at is uh, the expansion of the clean sweep program. So again, great program. You can see them in the morning, whether it's clearing snow, picking things up, et cetera. Great group of people doing great work. What we realized, uh, we're right over here. Okay. Perfect, so excellent. Another group of volunteers. Uh, and workers that, that get things done that, that we probably should applaud for because every single day they're out there doing that. So one, one thing we did hear about though is that there's a, an area, and I always struggle when we talk about this one, uh, so I, I wanna thank Ted for the, the wording this morning of biohazards. Okay, so it's a, it's a real problem. So there has been some funding uh, put aside by city council for biohazard cleanup. So 
some of that is a pressure washer, some of that's people, but we're going to get that done. So that's a very important one. And a direct response to what we heard from business. Uh, next, promotion. So what we also knew was the, the BRZ had an ambassador program. So not to be confused with the, the ambassador program, the police or ambassador watch program, uh, but was to, to promote downtown, right? Literally, I think sometimes plugging meters, if I'm not mistaken, et cetera. So, but it was seasonal. It was very, uh, very seasonal, very limited. So there's an expansion of that. So we're going to give that uh, a one-year funding and see where we are at the end of that program. So that's the other piece, BRZ directly. Uh, the next part is education, so I'm actually not going to speak to that at all because that's why you're here, right? So this is for all, all business. Uh, and then, of course, there's uh, the built environment improvement. So this is just about specifically uh, downtown. So this is the, the Main Street grant program uh, that hopefully everyone is familiar with. And, of course, uh, the other piece, and this may sound really simple to people, but it's coordination. So. What happened is, sometimes you, you don't understand what's going on until you see it. So when we met with uh, uh, BRZ, when we met with the chamber, uh, when we met with the individual business owners, what became real clear was well, there was a lot of people trying to do a lot of good work, but we were not coordinating it very well, or at all. So what we did is we simply committed an ad hoc committee uh, within the city with focus to get things done. So Andrew Malcolm, and folks don't know Andrew, a lot of this is Andrew's work. So I come back from a meeting where we got um, schooled, I'll say, for lack of a better term, uh, by business of what was needed. A lot of it was, was what I'll call no-brainer things, things that we needed to do. So I came back, and, and Andrew can attest to this, and I said, things will happen, things will happen quickly, and we will respond. Andrew coordinated all that. So for those who work for me, you know I'm not always the easiest guy, because I expect results. We need action, we got action. And it's a result of the input from everyone in this room. So, with that, one of the uh, media asked, what's the difference between what I'm presenting today and what I presented at City Council? And truth is, not very much. Other than I'm a little more candid here. And two, I'm willing to take questions. <laughs> and not that I wasn't willing to at City Council, but of course they asked very different questions. Uh, this is your lived experience, this is what you need. So glad to talk about it now, glad to talk about it at any time, glad to come back uh, when we do the evaluations. Um, police are still here to talk about the, the WASH program specifically, so that's where we're at in the program. So if people had some questions, um, gladly answer. The mayor is also here, so I don't want to put him on the spot, but he will also answer questions. <laughs> if you want to go political, because obviously that's not my role. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, fantastic questions. Uh, so I'm going to jump into more of the business education piece. So uh, just for anyone who didn't want to crank their necks, uh, I am Andrew Malcolm, and I'm with the City of Lethbridge. Uh, so I just wanted to, a lot of these people have been talked about and introduced already, so I'll go through really quickly. But uh, obviously the City of Lethbridge is involved in this. Uh, we have the Heart of Our City Committee, which is a committee of council dedicated to looking at downtown. There's a few members here. Our Chair Don Lighty, uh, Clara Pudaloo, and Aaron Crane. I think that's everyone. But uh, if you're looking at somebody to talk to about downtown, these are some great advocates for the downtown. Um, obviously, Christy Kruger and her team from Lethbridge Chamber, uh, Ted Stilson and the, Ted, and the downtown BRZ, um, and Melissa Johnson, who uh, manages the Clean Suite program, do a fantastic job. She's in the midst of evolving the program into uh, a 2.0, which is a pallet design company, which will provide meaningful daily activities for some individuals. Obviously, it's not the scale that we need, but it's a first step in the right direction. So, kudos to the BRZ and Clean Suite program for that. Uh, the Lethbridge Police Service, uh, Sergeant Robin Clausen of the Downtown Policing Unit, you know, obviously we're introduced to, to everybody else. Uh, the Sage Plant Patrol, again, thank you for what you've initiated and what you're doing on a daily basis. And then our Downtown Public Security team, who isn't here, but that is Paladin Security at the moment, and they are helping us out uh, in Galt Gardens in the summer and also bridging the gap uh, between now and when the, the watch program gets going. So specifically on the business education, the seminar or the program, 
So this is a new program. Uh, we're anticipating that it will be fully rolled out in April of this year. So we're under a uh, very tight time frame. Uh, and why we're gathering you all today is to help us in putting that together. So uh, we have a subcommittee composed of the city, the LPS, the BRZ, and the chamber. And we've been meeting uh, every two weeks to start to put together this seminar as well as a framework for our, our strategy or our program. Um, it's designed after a successful business watch program from 2001. So we dusted off an old binder with uh, old word clip art and we're looking to update it and bring it into the 21st century. So it's, it's forming the background to this education program. Basically what we want to do is we want to provide you in a physical document or an online document, potentially even an app, all the questions that you have as a business, a resident, or a nonprofit, or an event organizer in the downtown. We want you to have easy, clear, and accessible information in terms of what role you can play in, in making downtown safe uh, for your customers, for yourself, uh, and everyone around you. So again, these will be monthly seminars that are we're going to target the third Tuesday of every month. So uh, March 19th here at Castle will be our next seminar. And uh, going forward, it'll be more education-based. And uh, every session, we will end with a bit of a round table where we're going to be continually looking for feedback from the business community on what we're doing uh, throughout. Uh, as this rolls, we want to make sure if we're doing something that's not addressing the problem, that we're identified as, so we don't continue to do that, and we can maybe pick up on some of those gaps. The next uh, session will be more or less what's happening with the drug crisis, creating a baseline understanding for everyone, whether it's the red right information on needles or, or, or what is happening in terms of programs like Intox Detox, we'll give a crash course on, on what's happening. Do you know when you can do this? Do you know when, like what lunch time is this? Oh yes, we're gonna try and keep 11.30 to one as the consistent time for it. So on, in the middle of your table, there is a white sheet that has a blue question across the top, and there are some guiding questions or things on there. This is where we're putting it back to you as the businesses that are in the downtown to, to let us know a very simple question. What do you feel you want or need to know about downtown cleanliness and safety? We want you to be clear, concise, and frank on what you need to know. We've, been, we've added some just suggestions there, but we want you to talk with your table group, put those down, fill as many sheets as you need, uh, and this will help us really begin to build a framework of what the businesses need. We didn't want to take the lead on this without actually talking, touching base with everyone in the room uh, because we didn't want to be rolling out a program that doesn't actually address your needs. So, last slide I think. Um, just before, uh, this is going to be the last time that you're going to have a speaker. Uh, uh, with your table group, please take the time till 1 o'clock, we have the facility, to, to fill out those what you need to know. Make sure that the forms get handed in to either myself, Ted Stilson, or Christy Kruger, uh, and we will gladly compile those. Uh, and then hopefully by the next uh, seminar, we have a framework of what uh, this information will look like. Uh, so just before I put down the mic, again, I want to thank the Chamber, the BRZ, the City of Lethbridge, Harbor City, the LPS, and uh, most importantly, I guess, maybe Streetside Eatery, they provided the food for us today, so if you haven't had a bite to eat yet, um, head over there, uh, eat it all up. It's great to have a downtown business uh, supporting uh, these seminars, and uh, this is something that we hope to continue for the rest of the 2019 year. So thank you very much. Um, again, dive into your tables and make sure those sheets get to uh, one of the three of us. So thank you again.